Wikipedia and my Twitter name are the same. It's Pigs on the Wing. You can find that in the program notes for this session, I think. Uh, so if you want to shout insults, you can do it on Twitter instead of right here in the room and nobody will know who did it. My talk this morning is about the edit button, or really it's about what Wikipedia is and what you have to do if you want to edit it. The intended audience of this talk is people who have never edited Wikipedia before, and I see some very familiar faces here, and I'm a little worried because I know they know how to edit Wikipedia. So they are either here to steal my ideas, or they're here to insult me and shout heckles. So can I just ask you please, how many of you have edited Wikipedia before? Okay, how many people have not edited Wikipedia before? Okay, so may I ask why the rest of you are here? Okay, well we have four people here who have not edited Wikipedia before, so I'm gonna to talk to you four and everybody else can listen, okay? I'm going to ask you a question, and I'm going to ask the four people who haven't edited Wikipedia before to answer it. Uh, what is Wikipedia? Can somebody shout out? A free encyclopedia, that's true. And everybody can see what there is written uh, without paying anything. Uh, and, yes, okay. The, the slogan used to be the free encyclopedia that anybody can edit. And that is very important because Wikipedia isn't just an encyclopedia that is free, that comes from a publishing company who have a load of professional paid editors who sit in an office and write art articles all day. Wikipedia is a community built, open source, free in every sense of the word, uh, compendium of knowledge. So I write Wikipedia articles, and a lot of the people in this room and most of the visitors to Sinolario write Wikipedia articles because it's a good hobby, because it's a worthwhile thing to do, and because we know it's useful for other people. And when we write those articles, we donate the license to use our material, uh, in other words, the copyright permission, so if I write something in Wikipedia, I still own the copyright legally, but I have to agree to a license that says anybody may reuse this freely. The only requirement is that they give me attribution, that they say where they got it from. So you may take text from a Wikipedia article and you may put it on your own website or uh, on a poster in the museum or on a T-shirt or in a book, or anywhere you want to. And if you say, this work includes some text from Wikipedia, or this work is the text from a Wikipedia article in its entirety, you have met all your obligation to the people who wrote that. That's all you have to do, no payment at all, even if you sell the book for money to other people. So that is a very important principle. And when you edit Wikipedia, you have to agree to those terms and conditions as well. So that is the first important principle. It is free to use and it is free to reuse. And if you want to participate, you have to agree to that. So when you click the button that says save, when you make an edit, you are telling people, I agree that other people may reuse this. And if you create an account, you are also telling them, uh, telling the world, Everything I do with this account is free for other people to reuse. That's a very important principle. And that applies to Wikipedia and to the other projects that we run under the same umbrella, by the, run by the Wiki, or hosted by the Wikimedia Foundation. Which brings me to my next point. Wikipedia is hosted by an organization called the Wikimedia Foundation. So the content is owned by the community, by thousands of people who wrote the articles. Like I said, if I write something, I re own the copyright. It's mine, but I let you use it. But we have an organization called the Wikimedia Foundation who are asked by the community to keep the machines running that make Wikipedia work. So many of you have broadband at home and you have an internet connection 
and if you're lucky you have a speed of 100 gigabits a second and maybe you only have 10 like me at home maybe it's even slower you think of the bandwidth that the servers that serve Wikipedia to the world need it's enormous if you think of a water pipe the pipe bringing the water into your house is like this that's your bandwidth for your internet connection and the pipe for Wikipedia is like this it's like the main water supply to the city of Milan it's big and that takes a lot of money it takes a lot of electricity and it takes cooling to keep the servers cool because not only is there a big pipe but at the end of the big pipe are a lot of computers servers that have all the articles on them and when you say give me the article on Isino Lario or the article on uh, Birmingham England where I'm from because you want to read about my lovely home city then one of those computers says here is the article you asked for and Wikipedia is about the fifth biggest website in the world it's up there with eBay and Amazon and Google in terms of the volume of traffic so the Wikimedia Foundation has to keep all that running and that takes money as I said and people so they employ staff and every year they ask you for donations so if you make a donation uh, once a year thank you very much because that's what it pays for it pays for all that to happen the Wikimedia Foundation hosts a number of projects that are free like Wikipedia so first of all when we say Wikipedia we use a single word one Wikipedia and in my mind that's the English Wikipedia for you it might be the Italian Wikipedia or some other language but there are actually 291 Wikipedias and there will soon be a couple more so there is an English language Wikipedia and an Italian language Wikipedia and a French language and German language uh, and right down to languages that some of you have never heard of you probably can't name 291 languages if I ask you to but there are that many and they're all run in the same way volunteers doing the content Wikimedia Foundation hosting the software and, and running the servers and there are some other projects as well you may have heard of Wikidata and Wikimedia Commons and Wikiquote and Wikiversity and Wikibooks and Wikisource and some other projects as well so they're running the same way but the big projects are Wikipedia and Wikidata and Wikimedia Commons I'm not going to talk about the other projects today but there are plenty of talks this weekend at Wikimania where you can hear about them so what are the principles that underlie Wikipedia if you want to edit Wikipedia what do you have to do well first of all you have to agree to the policies of Wikipedia and they are roughly these we want neutrality so we want you to write about what the world thinks about a subject not what you think about it so if you take a contentious subject like Jerusalem is it in Palestine is it in Israel if you take a subject about gun control in America should there be gun control should everybody be allowed to have a gun there are differing opinions and there is no one true story about that it depends who you ask so in your article on Wikipedia you have to say some people believe this and some people believe that you know some people uh, believe in evolution and some do not but the majority of the evidence is for evolution and so we have a little bit at the bottom that says some people do not believe this it does not have to be 50 50 you have to reflect what the rest of the world thinks so we want neutrality and we want you um, to be free of conflict of interest so you should not write an article about yourself or your father or your mother or your son or your daughter or the company that you work for but that's not very clear-cut because if you live in a sinolario you can write about a sinolario because you know it more than anybody else so you have to stay neutral if you write about a sinolario you can't write this is the best village in Italy I'm sure today we all think this is the best village in Italy but the world maybe does not say that so you can say it's a village you can say it's known for its beauty and its wildlife and all the things that you can find in reliable sources that you can write about uh, that write about a sinolario that you can quote or cite but you have to take what other people say and give a balanced view 
there is a special rule if you are paid to edit, you must declare that. So if you're working for a company and your boss says, write an article about what we do, then you have to say, my boss told me to write this, I'm being paid to do it. And that's a very important rule. You should also declare other conflicts of interest, but you don't have to. It, it's a matter of uh, conscience. If you want to say, I'm writing an article about my grandfather, that's probably okay, because you're, you know, your grandfather is sufficiently distant that you don't have such a, a conflict of interest. But it's a good idea to say, this is my grandfather, so people can see that you're being transparent. And I've already mentioned very slightly, we want you to cite your sources. So for every statement that you put into Wikipedia, you have to say where you got your information. So if you say the population of Isinolario is, I don't know the figure, say 750 people, we have to know how you know that. Is it from the census? Is it from a publication, oh, thank you, uh, from a publication by the, the city or the uh, regional government? Is it from uh, a newspaper? So you have to say which publication, the URL, or the, if it's a book, the ISBN and the page number, and you tell us where you got that, so that we can verify it. Verifiability is the word, and it means I can go to the book and check that what you said is correct. But if I say something, you can check it. So it's not because you're new, or because you're Italian, or wherever you're from, it's everybody can check everybody else's work. And that's how we ensure the content is of good quality. So you must cite reliable sources. So what do I mean by a reliable source? Well, a good book from a reputable publishing company, a recognized newspaper from a, a, a good family of newspapers, the town council or the regional council or the national government website, those are reliable. Your blog, or something you read on Facebook is not reliable because you can put anything there. I can put on my website, I have a Nobel Prize, but it's not true, not yet anyway. So you can't use my website for claims that I make that I have achieved things. The only time you can do that is if you say, Andy Mabbott thinks Wikipedia is really good, and I say that on my website because that's my opinion and you're reporting what I said. But other than that, you need to use things that are reliable and independent. So not something that somebody wrote themselves about themselves. And I can illustrate that with a very good example. Most actors and actresses lie about their age. They say they are younger than they really are because of the, the discrimination in the film industry. So you can't use their website or their agent's website to give their date of birth. So there's a little example of an unreliable source. The other thing is you can't write an article about something if it's not considered notable. You are all special people. Your mothers and fathers and your family love you. We love you because you're Wikipedians or because you're in a Zinolario and you're hosting our conference. You're no lovely people, you're very good people, but you are not noted by the rest of the world for what you have done. You're ordinary people like me. So to have a Wikipedia article about you, you have to be recognized by the world at large as significant for your achievements. We call that notability. It doesn't mean importance because like I say, you are all important people in your own families and in your own villages and towns. The way we measure notability, at least on the English Wikipedia, and it's the same in most languages, is there has to be significant coverage about you. So somebody has to have written a magazine article or a book about you, or put up a statue about you in the town square, uh, or maybe you've been, had a program about you on television or radio at a national level. That is significant coverage. It has to be in independent sources. So again, your own blog does not count. Your mother or your daughter's website does not count because of course they, they love you and they will write about you. It has to be independent. And in the same way as the sources you cite, it has to be reliable. And we need at least two of those things, not just one. So if you do something once, 
it's not enough. You have to be noted by two different people, two different newspapers, two different books, and that will make you notable, and then we can write a Wikipedia article about you. Or if you want to write an article about something else, you have to show us as Wikipedia editors, here are two things that have significant coverage of this subject, and then you can write a Wikipedia article. So let's have a look at a Wikipedia article. I have one I was looking at earlier, just one moment. So this is about uh, an antiquarian book dealer. You've never heard of him. I'd never heard of him until today. But here is the article. And on the English Wikipedia, we structure them like this. And again, on most Wikipedias, it's the same. So I, I'm English. I only speak English. I can only tell you how the English Wikipedia works. You will have to imagine this is in your own language if you prefer. So at the beginning, we have what we call a lead. And this is a summary of the article. So if you're in a hurry and you don't want to read a whole long article, you can just read the summary here. And that will answer your question. Maybe you're sitting at home and you're watching a movie and you see an actor and you think, are they still alive or are they dead now? You can go there and you can answer this without reading the whole article. You don't have to go to the bottom to find the answer to that question. Maybe you want to know where are they from or what, what are the main films they were in or have they ever won an Oscar and all that information should be in the lead. Just one or two paragraphs at the beginning of the article. There is an exception. If you have an article that is only three or four paragraphs, it's too short to need a separate lead. So you can omit that. But otherwise you have a lead. And sometimes on the right hand side of the article, you have this box, you see it up here, called an info box. And that is an even shorter version with just the statements of facts. When this person was born, where they were born, when they died and where they died, what they were known for, what awards they won, in a very short summary. So again, if you just want to answer the question, that information is there. You will also notice that we have different ways to edit the article. So up here, is an edit button. This is what my talk is called, the edit button. And that will let you edit the whole article. But also, each section of the article, like this one, you see if I uh, highlight it, this one has an edit button here next to the heading. So you can edit just one little part of the article. And it is easier to edit a small part than the whole thing. If you want to change one word, then it is easier to just edit the section with that word in and find that word. If you edit the whole article, you'll be moving up and down trying to find it. So when you're going to edit, you're going to use reliable sources. You're going to cite them and say where you got the information. So you see here, a little superscript number here. And if I click on it, you see here, the source where that information came from. And you're going to use the edit button here to edit just that section. Now you'll notice today I'm not showing you anything technical. This afternoon we have a training session. If you want to come along with your laptop, I will actually show you how to make the edits, how to do the, fit the technical part of editing. But today I just wanted to talk about the general principles. So. You can write a new article in Wikipedia, or you can just go in and make a small change. Maybe you notice that some information is out of date. You know, if Zeno Lario has a new mayor, we have to go and update the article to say that. Uh, the mayor of Asino Lario wins a medal. We have to go and say that. So you might make a small change, or you might make a big change, or you might make a whole new article. But we want all of you to contribute. And in Wikipedia, we have a, a proverb or a maxim, which is be bold. We want you to be bold. So if you're not sure, try it anyway. If it's wrong, somebody will come along and fix it, and hopefully they will explain to you how it could be better. But mostly it'll be right, and you will have made a little contribution to the biggest volunteer project the world has ever had. And we would really welcome your participation. So I'm afraid my time is up but we have a few minutes if there are any questions. Does anybody have a question?
Thank you. Any questions? Yes, sir. Can you wait for the microphone? Um, if, for example, if I am paid editor, where shall I mention it? At my personal uh, Wikipedia page or in I'm sorry? If, for example, if I am paid editor, if I am, uh, yes. where shall I mention it? Okay, there are two places. Uh, on the talk page of the article, well, there are three pages. So every article, you have a tab here that says article, you have a tab that says talk. And the talk page is where we discuss the article. We don't discuss the subject of the article. So if this is about uh, AC Milan, you don't go on and say, weren't they playing terribly today? I'm so disappointed I might burn my AC Milan scarf. This is not the place for that. But this is a place where you can say, uh, they have a new goalkeeper and we don't mention it. Does anybody know the new goalkeeper's name? You talk about the article. And on here, you can say, I wrote this article and I was paid to do it. Or I've updated the article, but it's about the company that I work for, so I want to tell you that. So that's one place. The other thing is when you have an account, you have a talk page which is about your account, about you, where people can leave you messages. And you have a page, I'll show you mine, just one moment. You have a profile page about you. So this is the one about me. You can tell it's about me because it has this handsome photograph. Uh, and this is where you can say, I'm a paid editor, or I work for AC Milan, so all my edits are paid. And you can say it there. And the third place, when you make an edit and you save your edit, you leave a little summary that says what you did. I added the name of the new goalkeeper for AC Milan. I changed the name of the mayor of Asino Lario. And in that you can say, and I was paid to make this edit. So you can do it in one of those places, two of those places, or if you really want to be careful, you can do it in all three. But you must do it in at least one. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Any other questions? Over here? Just wait for the microphone, please. While we're waiting for the question, let me tell you something else. Uh, I mentioned if you have an account a couple of times. You don't have to sign in to edit Wikipedia. You can edit Wikipedia without signing in and your IP address will be shown. But we prefer you to have an account and it's better for you to have an account. It's better for you because people can leave you messages and you can see what edits you made last week and last month and last year. And you can bookmark pages. We call it watching them. So you have a watch list, which is a list of your favorite pages that tells you when they've been edited. So we recommend that you create an account. You have a question. Uh, yes, I'm, I've got a question about the language versions. And um, so if I would like to translate a part of the article in different language, yes. what's the best way I uh, cite or make a reference on it? OK. Uh, the question is about translating articles from one language to another. We encourage people to do that. It's a good way to get started because if you want to write an article in Italian and the article already exists in English or vice versa, somebody has already done the research. They have already found all the sources. They have probably already found some photographs. There's no point in you going to the library and doing all that work again. So you can translate from one language to another, but you must say, I translated this from the English language article into Italian, or from this Italian article into English. Because just like using Wikipedia material in other websites, using it in another Wikipedia requires attribution. So on the English Wikipedia, we have this special page. called Wikipedia colon translate, or translation, I'm sorry. Uh, and this tells you very precisely how to do that. And this page exists in lots of languages. So it will tell you if you're translating into French or into German or into English, what template you should use to, to, to indicate that you made a, a translation. You don't have to do it this way, but this is a very good guide. 
Okay, we have one more question over here and then one down here. Oh, yes, that's a very good point. Right after this talk is a talk about translating articles. Okay, a question over here. Translation. Uh, so the, the, the uh, thing you can do is at least write in a, in a comment when you're saving the article. That was translated from that and that. Because in some wikis there are no special uh, templates to show it. So at least this minimum attribution is one thing. The second thing is uh, read the sources that were in the original article. Because we find sometimes people translating article without getting into the sources that were there. Yes. And then in the end you find out, well, that sometimes the sources are wrong. So it's uh, better also look in there and, and verify that they are really proper. Yeah, so those two small, small things when you translate the articles into different languages. Thank you. Do we have time for one last question? One more, one more question? Anybody? OK, I think we're done. So I invite you to come this afternoon to the training at the museum. Bring your laptop. It's about two and a half hours. And we will teach you actually to do the editing. Uh, but if you don't have time to come this afternoon or you're going somewhere else, then try it at home. And if you're not sure, there are plenty of people here today and tomorrow who you can ask. So thank you very much for your attention, and I look forward to talking to you around the Sinolario in the next couple of days. Thank you. Thank you.